For the last few episodes of WJ Live, you guys probably know that I have made sure to uh, track Kamala Harris's uh, approval ratings because they've been super, super bad. She's actually set records for how bad her approval ratings have been um, since the 1970s. Well, um, Joe Biden's giving her a run for her money today. (laughs) So Joe Biden's current approval rating is at 40%, according to the Rasmussen reports. And a poll of likely U.S. voters says that uh, 58% disapprove of the president's performance. And only 21% said that they would strongly approve of the president's performance at this time. So these are really, really bad numbers. And let's like, if we think really about it, um, Trump also had a really, really tough time with his numbers for the most part. But at this point in his presidency, Donald Trump was at a 43% approval rating. Now, the 43% approval rating is is a little bit shaky because you're going, hey, that's only 3% above. But when you really think about it, Donald Trump was going against the media. He was going against every narrative out there against him. Every single institution in the U.S. and the broader world was against him. And so you have people who are bending over backwards to defend Biden, um, doing anything possible to just go, oh, look, he's grandpa. You know, we don't have to worry about it. And so I think that that really says a lot because, you know, uh, there's just no reason why Biden should be doing as bad as he is. Um, now, Rasmussen brought up a tweet today, and I think I think we have that uh, for you guys. And they said that the majority oppose the $3.5 trillion spending bill. There's a majority of people against ri- uh, raising the debt ceiling, and a majority believe that the pandemic is a Trojan horse for permanent socialism. Wow. So these are really, really crazy. Uh, key critical issues. So um, there's a few things that have happened in the last month and a half, and I'm going to read off a list, but I'm curious what you guys think is the main reason Americans are so fed up with Biden. So first we have Afghanistan. That can be summed up into one word. Two, we have cutting Boris Johnson off mid-sentence at the White House, which is a national embarrassment. Then we have COVID vaccine mandates. Four, excluding France in an alliance with Australia and Britain, um, which basically forced France to bring home its ambassadors. Five, we have the border crisis. And six, we have never taking questions and consistently turning his back on his own people. So uh, what do you think, George? Well, that's quite a list. It's hard to, it's, uh, I'm kind of like Caleb with with my question. Do I have to choose just one? Yeah, all uh, the above. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I, I I think my my the downward trend certainly seemed to really start or at least uh, accelerated quite a bit with Afghanistan. So I think that was a big part of it. I think that might have gotten some people paying attention who weren't paying all that much attention before. Yeah. Um, but but my gut tells me that the real issue, the real ankle weight here for the Biden administration is the border crisis. The, the images, the constant uh, uh, flow of, um, of illegal uh, immigrants into the country. It, you know, there's video, there's, there's pictures, there's a clearly deceptive narrative, not just, not just uh, a narrative that we disagree with politically, but one that, that the White House is just, just clearly just lying about what's going on and the american public is is uh they we don't always have the the longest attention span but we're not dumb yeah we remember that it wasn't like this like nine months ago (laughs) we remember that donald trump had done quite a bit towards securing the southern border and like him or or dislike him uh that you really can't argue with that Mm -hmm. that the effectiveness of that policy and it's just so crystal clear afghanistan a little more mushy, I, in my opinion. It's you know even the people who are mad at Biden for the way he got out of Afghanistan, like me, um, may, might question whether we should have been there in the first place. And so there's a little bit of like, well, at least we're out of there. You know, mm-hmm. the borders is a lot more cut and dry than that. I think. Yeah. I, so I, if I had to vote on just one issue, I think that's the one I'd. That's the one. Yeah. I think. <laughs> Nine months ago, the entire news cycle was what did Trump tweet today. So yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. now they're forced to do their jobs and actually report on what's going on. Yeah. Uh, what say you, Caleb? Well, I'm with George that I think Afghanistan in many ways was the instigating event that seemed to trip everybody's radar and just make them pause for a second and say, what's going on? Yeah. Yeah. But uh, in my opinion, I think part of what's really dogging them now is COVID. Because you go back to the 4th of July, 
Mm. Biden's out in front of the White House and he's saying, oh, this is victory. It's almost like right. eerily reminiscent of George Bush's Mission, Mission Accomplished, where he's yeah. standing on the carrier with the giant sign behind him. Right. But, of course, we all know with Delta, the prevalence of the virus is much more than I think they anticipated. It doesn't seem that the current vaccines that are rolled out have a great job at curbing transmission. Right. Although they seem to be um, doing the task as far as preventing, preventing death and hospitalization. Yeah. But to lose the credibility that they once had on the virus, where they showed up and said, oh, well, don't worry. The adults are here. Everything's going to calm down. Trust us. But now we're seeing the cases more or less at a consistent pace that they were at some of the worst points of the pandemic last year yep. pre-vaccine. I think that is now the thing that they're having the most difficulty with because of all the crises that were, they were supposed to be able to handle. The virus was the one I think that they felt the most competent, and now they're being proven once again to be incompetent at handling the task. It's so really, that would be that would be my point. I think that's a really good point. That it's also the most impactful on our lives. You know that. Like, uh, you know, I've probably bumped into an illegal immigrant here and there, but I don't know that I ever have. And it, the fact that they were here illegal we probably yeah. didn't impact me in any significant way. Um, COVID impacts all of us. You know, we've mm -hmm. all had to put on a mask when we didn't want to put it on or couldn't go somewhere we wanted to go or whatever. So yeah. that's a really good, a really good point, I think. Yeah.